We're Tyler and Todd, and a year ago we parked our RV in the middle of the Canadian forest and started developing a 10-acre piece of land into our dream off-grid home. With summer winding down, we're not only continuing to tackle the physical projects that will ensure we're warm this winter, but we're also reaping the rewards from our garden and learning a few new skills along the way so we're prepared for another winter in the woods. Hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up, which helps us get introduced to more like-minded people just like you. Come along. Good morning. Not that it's out of the norm by any means at all, but Ta got up extra early this morning to finish the firewood. He just wanted to have it done. It was actually a lot more work than we thought. Doing the last little bit by hand, we're so grateful that we had the tractor. Definitely thinking about investing in some equipment like that for ourselves. Like we're always doing projects here and we can't be breaking our backs like we normally do, doing all the physical stuff by hand, so. Anyway, Todd's running some errands right now, so I'm gonna continue working on this space. So what we need to tackle today is getting this area ready that we told you about a few videos ago. So um, if you haven't caught that video, just click right here. We go through the full tour of the vision for this entire property and what our plan is. So what I'm gonna be doing today is prepping the area for that barrel sauna that we showed you about, as well as the area for our outdoor cooking space. So we need to put one inch of pressure dust down and once the dust is down we need to use a plate compactor to smush it all into the ground make sure it's level and flat and perfectly ready the reason that that is such a rush is you might notice all of these orange um, sort of markings all over the gravel that's for the screw piles that are going in next week we're really, really excited. But once the screw piles are in, we won't be able to get the tractor over to this area. So it's really important that I do that today. How are you finding it? Good. You I liking it? This. Really? I could do this like all day, every day. While I've been gone, he's gotten this much crusher dust into this area. This is where we're gonna be putting the gazebo down here with an outdoor, um, like a space that's covered for us to put our barbecue. I think he's doing so good. He's even starting to practice with flattening it back out. The plan is we still have a bunch of that small wood left over from last year with our mini stove. So we're gonna move that over to here. So I just finished up with this area, made some pretty big mistakes, not gonna lie. So as you can see, when I come down this embankment, it's pretty steep. There's a probably six foot drop that comes right down here, right where I put the crusher dust. So crusher dust is just gonna, con hey buddy. <laughs> The crusher dust, as you can see, will just continue to slide down the hill. So that's not gonna work. So what I need to do is use the same sort of rock that we used when we built the driveway. And I need to put that as my foundation down first and then put the crusher dust over top. Um, also, this stuff is a lot cheaper. It's about $200 for a 15 ton load like a big size dump truck where the crusher dust is I think like 350 so it's a significant price difference as well so I'm gonna get on the phone and see if I can order some of this gravel fingers crossed and yeah fix this mistake <laughs>
Dividing and conquering was absolutely the best way to cross off things on our to-do list today. I'm really proud of us. Do you know why? Why? Because teamwork, what does it do? Makes the dream work. It makes that dream work. So, like, look at this, this is insane. So, there's almost eight cord of wood in here now. Yeah, and also too, before people give us, like, shit about throwing the wood in, how would you stack this? And then the next piece is this big. So this is the economy product that we got last year. It's the ends from when they're running like the chopping machine. And it was perfect for us because we had the cubic mini stove, but we still want to burn it up because we don't want to be wasteful. So in it goes like that. I'm also really proud of myself with what I accomplished. I'm very proud of you. Yeah. I fell in love with you all over again the past few days with that tractor. I think it looks pretty good. It's definitely a lot taller than what I thought it was gonna be. When you're standing out at the edge, this is where the end of the hot tub is gonna be. And you have this amazing view. Unfortunately, we discovered these two trees right here are dead, so they have to go out, but it'll actually make it a better view, so it's not a big deal. But anyway, the day's pretty much over now. It's supposed to be really rainy tomorrow, so I think we're just gonna enjoy the rest of the night outside. Getting a little fire. A yeah, little is the key word. We're using some of that firewood. <laughs> Perfect use for it. Exactly. This is the soft wood that doesn't isn't gonna really do much in the wood stove in the dome, so we're just gonna use it outside. Can you hear the owl? Hear that? Yeah. Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo. <laughs> he's been um he's been quiet or she i think it's a he or they they i well yeah oliver's the name oliver the owl but um they've been quite quiet this summer they must have bought a vacation home <laughs> so we are very excited for tonight because we are trying something that we've never tried but came highly recommended by so many of you in the comments of last week's video Fried green tomatoes. I'm kind of nervous for it, actually. I don't know why, there's just something that... Probably because you hate tomatoes. That could be it. But I do like things fried, so... It's a toss up. We'll see. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> it's where the morals versus the principles. So pretty. So this goes in a separate bowl. So they said one bowl, but really you need two. You need two bowls. So well, I said right there automatically down to a three-star recipe. Okay. I'm excited for fall. I think I'm gonna next year learn how to grow my own pumpkin spice so we can have our own lattes. <laughs> you know what? Your life would be garbage without me. You would be so bored. You would... Like you're standing right in the light. Like I went over and I got that light because I could not see. And where are you standing? But right in the light. Thank you. Or you could like make yourself useful and take some B-roll of me cooking this. Oh. You gotta be like a 1950s house. Wrong side. Oh, the light. <laughs> this went a lot of mine. to each other. A lot of owl sex going down. <laughs> a lot of owl sex. <laughs> you know what? Wash your vegetables this time of year. What? Owl sex remnants everywhere. Not on top of your vegetables. I don't know where they do it. They could do a fine overhead. Not in front of my salad. <laughs> don't let the memory fade. Truth. I'm ready. We have to try it together. 
can you imagine if we're like, this is the worst thing we've ever eaten? <laughs> it's actually really good. Oh. Uh, way different than I was expecting. Very different than I was thinking too. Yeah. Um, More savory. Mm hmm. Really impressed. Glad we didn't have time and we went with summer savory. Oh, <laughs> yeah. It tastes kind of, it's like very um, homey. Like I feel like someone's grandma came up with this recipe. They for sure did. And this recipe was developed with love. It would be really good with baked beans, I think. Mm. It would until tomorrow. Yeah. Mm. We live, in, we live in an RV, love. Remember? <laughs> we share the air. We, um, <laughs> we didn't have, um, thyme, the spice, so we, uh, substituted with summer savory. I'm gonna try it with a little bit of sriracha, just for a kick. I feel Ooh. like I'm missing a little flare of... Ooh. I swear, that was the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you guys, we are gonna enjoy this, um... Enjoy our amazing night. Like, come on. Come on. We'll see you in the morning. Also, good with sriracha. Oh, yeah? Really good. All right, I'll try it. Okay. Good night. Good morning. Hurricane Ida has made her way to the land. So, we slept in this morning. Because what else are you supposed to do? But now we're gonna get started on preserving our vegetables. So Tyler's gone out to the garden to harvest some of the stuff that we're gonna be preserving today. I'm really excited for this because we've never preserved anything before. So it's gonna be, gonna be an experience, I think. What do you think? That's nasty out there. Look at that. Isn't that exciting? That is. I can't wait to like get it into bottles and like in January we'll be able to be eating this and thinking about growing it. It's exciting. Cool. Kind of like how I'm gonna be thinking about drinking this red bottle of wine that we made. You decided we're gonna do the day drinking thing? Well, I feel like it's a hurricane, so that's a sign. <laughs> we're canning, so that's a sign. And I just think it'd be fun. So that was like maybe a tenth of the vegetables. Do you want me to like continue? Like it's pretty much ready, so we may as well do it. Sure. There's you... some tomatoes that aren't ready and some of the hot peppers, but I think we may as well continue. Poor Fran. There you go. Someone's in the kitchen with Ida. Someone's in the kitchen with Ida. All right, here we go. The cooking shows, they make it look so easy and they're always smiling, laughing, having a good time. So hours and hours later, I finally finished picking all of our crops. I don't know if you can hear the wind outside. The rain's kind of moved on and with it, it's brought like the most sticky, humid air. Todd said like, obviously it makes sense. It's a tropical storm. <laughs> Still, I never really thought about it, but it's really hot. Anyway, check out our crop. I'm really excited about it. So everything that you see here, we're actually gonna be able to harvest again. Um, there's still lots of stuff on the vines that are green, so we're gonna give it a little bit of time. But we've got our two different types of cucumber. So this larger cucumber here is what we're gonna be using. What's wrong? I'll hold the camera so you can show. Okay, so this larger cucumber here is what we're gonna be using for making mustard pickles. This is going to be used for regular pickles. We've got lots of green pepper. We've got green beans. Bunch of different types of spicy peppers. We've got jalapenos, we've got serrano peppers, we've got red hot cherry peppers. And then this is a Hungarian pepper that was supposed to be uh, not spicy, but it actually turned out to be spicy because we planted them in between our <laughs> habaneros and our jalapenos. And when you do that, many of you explained to us in the comments, the bees sort of cross pollinate. Oh my God, here. Yeah, go lay down, go. And then look at our tomatoes. This is what we're the most excited for. This is an unreal crop. So we're gonna convert all of this into salsa. 
really excited. You ready? Eddie. Are you ready? Charlie didn't get one. I didn't. I didn't want to say anything, but I was taking count. Good boys. And that's it. Charlie had green stains on his face yesterday from eating in the tomato patch. Were you eating tomatoes? <laughs> so our first harvest pickle. You know what? I'll tickle your pickle for a nickel. Okay, so for this, this is gonna be pickled onions, okay. which are good for putting on hamburgers, sausage, oh, yeah, sandwiches, like that type of thing. I put her back in the pond twice. She can stay there. I know. She wants to play these games. I'll you can sit in the forest overnight. <laughs> you want to run away from home? Go. <laughs> <laughs> we would have been such good parents. Do you want to finish that one and I can get some? What do I do? So as many as you can in, when you can't get any more in, two pieces of garlic. Okay. A small piece of dill on top. And then you fill with water. Um, brine. And then hand tight. We'll take the lids out, get it to a boil, and then it goes in for, I think this recipe is 10 minutes of processing time. When you open this jar, like, you kind of get last. it. It'll last. Like, show how much produce we still have left to go through. <laughs> Like embarrassing. <laughs> this is like buried too. This is like a mountain. If I spread it out, it looks like a lot more. I now know Same why um, the settlers um, had like 15 kids. Yeah, really? Like, how was one person, because one person would be out harvesting and the other would be in probably just pickling, they wouldn't have had wine. And then, like, yeah, we did get into the wine, but it is 8.55, so it's not like we haven't been doing this all day. I know, plus it's hurricane day. Yeah, like, it's if, hurricane day. if children get the day off school because it's a hurricane, <laughs> why can't I get a day off adulting, you know? Day off adulting, we did so much. <laughs> what should I do now? Let's chop the onion and the green pepper so that it's ready to go for making salsa. All right, we're going fast now. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Dying, you're so annoying. Oh, we're having peppers now, are we? Started out with carrots, moved on to beans, and now I'm really excited to spend time with you later, but I'm not sitting here cutting this to have you sit across from me and do nothing. If you want to be helpful, you can take this cutting board here and cut some tomato. I know, it's shocking. We can talk from here while you're cutting. I prefer to cut in silence. <laughs> so keeping it real with you guys, as always, pickling is a full-time job. Holy, I now know why they charge like 10 bucks at a craft fair for a thing of beets. They're incredibly beautiful. Like, love how they turned out. We've got these cute labels that go on top, but holy smokes, is this a lot of work. Mm-hmm. A lot of work. We don't have a lot of space, right? Like, it's just this here. Not a lot at all. So I think tomorrow we're going to set up, like, a big table. And we're then... Finish. It's been a day. <laughs> but we got pickled onions and carrots. <laughs> <laughs> and a belly full of wine. And that's all that matters. Oh, Right? Yeah. I love you. I love you, too. Well, I'm fond of you, depending on the day, really. Love you guys too. <laughs> Love you. We'll see you in the morning. Good morning. It is two days later. We just finished all of our pickling and canning. We're wave one. We still have half the garden left. <laughs> An incredible amount of work. We're really glad that we did it, but do not be mistaken. Um, this is a lot. <laughs> a lot. But it's a lot of food also. So we've made quite a bit. So we've got some dill and garlic carrots. We've got pickled garlic, which isn't shelf stable. So it'll stay in the fridge. We've done sweet onions. We've also done bread and butter onions. We've done salsa hot and mild. And what else did we do? Oh, we did crispy green beans. And then the one I'm the most excited for, they're called Fire and Ice Pickles. And they taste similar to Famous Dave's, which we haven't been able to get in Canada since we got back from the States. So I'm, I'm really, really excited. Good. I'm excited yeah. too. This is gonna be a lot of really great food for us to get through the winter. Feeling a little bit more prepared. And the nice thing is, we have enough that we'll be able to give away to some friends and family, which is really cool. Yeah, I think so. Oh, also, we dehydrated our chives. Forgot oh, to, yeah. yeah. Forgot to tell you that. 
So that's them. We had them growing okay. as flowers in the garden, and then we chopped them, sliced them, and now we'll be able to use them in soups and stir fries through the winter. It's really exciting. Yeah. All right. Well, we're feeling pretty tired, so to be honest, we're going to go <laughs> watch gonna, TV and have a nap. I'm going to crack a bottle of this salsa. Yeah. All right. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday. Bye.